Hey everybody, today's case is an extremely current case. As you can see, I am not in my usual setup, and today I am actually recording from my home office. The reason I'm doing that is not only because of how current this case is, but because I just kind of felt compelled to jump on here and share with you all of the details. So many, it's it's an emotional case, guys. So many of you guys have been requesting that I cover this. I ha- can't even tell you the amount of requests that I've received over the last 48 hours. So I wanted to just jump on here, let you know everything that's going on in this case. And this is definitely going to be a part one of part two, maybe even more, because there are still so many details emerging. But again, I just, with the amount of inquiries and requests coming through, I wanted to at least share what we know now to give everybody a little bit of understanding of what's going on. And then of course, I will circle back as more details emerge and as we learn more and get more evidence and things like that so that we get a better understanding and a better explanation of what's going on. So I apologize for the unusual setup, probably the poor lighting, probably the awful audio, but as I'm sure we can all agree on, that's not what matters in a situation like this. It's especially a hard case given that today, while I'm recording, it's Father's Day. It's one that has rocked the nation and is very difficult to talk about, but I'm going to jump on here and I'm going to share with you everything that we know so far, as I said. I'm going to be following this one very closely, so please check back for part two, possibly even more, and I just want to give a little bit of a warning that this is a case that will most likely not only break your heart with the details, but it is probably also going to anger you quite a bit. So please be prepared for that. It's something that just, it has more questions than it does answers at this point, which I think is something that is making it challenging for all of us to wrap our minds around. And I think that's also a contributing factor as to why there's been so many requests for this case, because there are so many questions and so few answers, and we're just trying to understand. So I'm going to stop talking, stop rambling, but today we are going to go over the Dorman family case happening right in Ohio. Hey guys, I'm Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life, and let's jump right in. This is Tend to Life with Annie Elise. Chad Christopher Dorman is a 32 year old man from Clermont County, Ohio. He is married to a woman who is believed to be named Laura, aged 34. He has a teenage stepdaughter, and she is believed to be 16 years old and named Alexis. Chad and Laura had three boys together, ages 3, 4, and 7. Their names are believed to be Hunter, Clayton, and Chase. The boys are described as hilarious, sports-loving, sweet little boys. They were known to be completely inseparable. Laura was allegedly a stay-at-home mom, and Chad was the breadwinner for the family. The family all lived in a modest three-bedroom, two-bathroom home in New Richmond, which is a city within Clermont County. New Richmond is a small town with the 2020 population being just under 2,800. It is nestled right along the Ohio River. In the afternoon of June 15th, just a few days ago, tragedy struck within the community and within the Dorman family. A 911 call came in around 4.15 from a distressed mother screaming that her babies had been shot. The mother who called was Laura, and she was screaming about her three young boys. At the same time that she was calling in, 16-year-old Alexis was running down the street toward the firehouse, screaming her father was killing people. You can see the fire station is basically right across the street. Someone saw and heard Alexis screaming and also called 911. Very quickly, nearly every patrol car in the area was dispatched. In a dispatch feed, a dispatcher could be heard telling everyone at the firehouse to go inside. The dispatcher was also telling the ambulance to turn off sirens, likely as a way to keep the shooter unaware that the police were coming. 
there was also someone letting dispatch know that they had a 16-year-old in the firehouse. They were referring to Alexis. When officers got to the home, no one could prepare for the horror that they were about to witness. Three little boys shot, and their father, Chad, sitting on the porch with a rifle with absolutely no care in the world. Now, I want to note that a news video said that a coroner said that two boys were in the front yard and that one was in the home. However, most of the information says that all three boys were in the front yard. Regardless, all three boys had been shot. And sadly, despite the efforts, the boys were pronounced dead at the scene. The body cam footage has already been released to the public. Now, I want to warn you that it is heartbreaking when you hear the boy's mother screaming in the background. And the black square that you will see in the video is censoring the little boy's bodies, who had all been shot execution style. Where's he at? Get him right here, right here. You got him on the porch. We've right asked not to last place we've been told. You show me your hands now! Stand up and Stand walk, up walk towards us! Stand up now! Walk towards us! Stand up with your hands up! Stand up now! His name is Chad Dorman. Chad Dorman. Hey. I know, but I know, but we can't. If you're on your first page and he's not complying. You know he's a shooter. Shoot him. We gotta find cover first. We ain't no good if we ain't safe or so. <laughs> hey, hey, no. We need to come from this side where we can see them. Don't take cover behind her. We see them. We're going to approach from this side. We got cover. Right here. Big cover. We got to go. 29 and 63 in Taipei. We're not going to get right now. Show us your Show fucking your hands, hands now! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up now! Stand up! Stand the fuck up! Get your hands out of here. Come to 21. Send the air. Those guys can confirm that there's people Get the EMS over here. Well, I, I did drugs with a clip, but I don't do drugs now. I'm sober. I'm not trying to fight you. 63. Get your butt inside. Gatlin, get your butt inside. We on primary? Now. 29, we got three Main. down. Hey, 16, 63, we're 21. Have no, EMS no. respond over here. What do I do? You're clear they're being advised. Probably 34, just start a mass casualty response. 63, do you want them to respond to the Laurel Lindale address? Where exactly do you need them? We're right in the front yard. What are you doing, man? Hey, are you talking all this? Can I roll over? I ain't gonna hurt you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hurt nobody. You got anything on you? No, I ain't got nothing, man. Phone, that's it. I ain't mad, I ain't, I ain't nothing. Just make sure that dog don't come out. I don't think he'll bite you. Just don't reach for him and try to grab him and pet him. All right. He won't bite you. What's going on, man? Nothing. Uh, can I stand up? It's kind of uncomfortable. I'm gonna get I ain't you gonna here do nothing. I ain't running away. You can do whatever you want with me.
Here. You the only one else inside the house? What? You the only one else inside yeah, the house? Yeah, yeah. Sit down right uh, here. My my daughter, she ran over to the fire department. Sit down. Uh, it's my stepdaughter. Put him in the cage. This is Can you get the wallet out of my back pocket? Shut up, dude. You have the right to remain silent. Fucking easy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, The craziest part of the body footage was just how calm the father Chad was. I noticed that he mentioned that he was not drunk, as if that would be the concern with three murdered children in the front yard. I can't imagine the strength that it took law enforcement to stay calm with him when they were witnessing such a traumatic event that had been caused by this ever so calm man, the, their own father. During all of that, Laura was quickly rushed away to University of Cincinnati Hospital since her hand had also been shot. She wasn't made aware until later that evening that her boys were officially pronounced deceased. As more details started to unfold, the community was not prepared to hear what had happened at the hands of this horrible human being. Chad, who had been planning this apparently for months, lined his three young boys up in the front yard. While it's unclear which of the boys did this, it has been made public knowledge that one of the boys tried to run away to a nearby field. Chad then hunted him down and brought him back to the house. At some point, Laura also tried intervening and grabbed the gun. Chad then shot her in the hand. Chad then shot all three of his children execution style. Those three sweet, innocent babies were unable to protect themselves in any sort of capacity, and Chad made sure that the one other person who could protect them, their mother, was unable to do so. There were actually news reporters who were made aware of the boys' deaths before Laura even was. A reporter named Tanya from WCPO later posted that she had known the boys were deceased when she was talking about the story on the news that night. However, the detectives had asked her team not to release that information until Laura had been made aware of what happened. On Friday, June 16th, Chad appeared at the Clermont County Courthouse on three counts of aggravated murder. Chad was brought in with many officers surrounding him. It was clear that he is now an extreme safety risk. Not only did he have multiple officers with him, but he was also in what is often described as a vest or a pickle suit. As most of you are aware, the outfit is unable to be shredded and it is used to protect inmates from harming themselves. Chad's attorney requested a $75,000 bond. However, the prosecution gave more details and then asked for a bond higher than one that had ever been asked for before. And the facts I have for you at this point are as follows. The trauma that this man has inflicted on his family, the community, law enforcement, first responders, and all of the rest of us who have any idea what's going on here is unspeakable. There's been a full admission in this case, Judge. The case is still new. Uh, we're still discovering facts. But the evil horror of what we know is impossible to process. In an act of just incomprehensible cruelty, the father that stands before you lined up his three young boys and he executed them in his own home with a rifle. They were ages three, four, and seven, Judge. 
in an act of desperation to save her children. The mother, at some point, grabbed the gun the father was wielding to attempt to protect them. We know that one of the boys was able to flee into a field near the home. And again, we know from his admission, father hunted that boy down, drug him back to the property, and executed him in front of witnesses. The mother was shot through the hand in her attempt to protect her children. Judge, I asked the court setting this bond to just begin to imagine their fear. This was the man that every day they woke up looking to for protection, love, guidance in all things. The man they trust more than any other person on earth. The person they rely upon to keep them safe from harm. He was their world, he was their guardian, and he executed them in cold blood. We know that from his admission. By that same admission, Judge, he has committed <clears throat> one of the most monstrous, craven, cowardly acts that will ever be our misfortune to see. To make things even more disturbing, Judge, this was no haphazard act. Again, by his own admission, he planned the events of this day. This did not happen on a whim. He's confessed to what I believe is the worst crime, at least I hope, that I'll see in my lifetime. I hope it's the worst fact pattern that ever comes before this court. Judge, it's important for the court to know and the bond we're going to request today for the court to understand, Claremont County deputies, Monroe Township Fire and EMS, and other first responders bravely respond to the scene where they don't know what's going on. They did not know what they're facing, and they come into a, a scene that no one can ever be prepared for. No law enforcement training, no training of any kind prepares you for this. It's easy to forget that these are men and women with families, children, feelings, emotions. They're not some automaton performing a delegated function. They're people. They were required to give CPR to gunshot children, three, four, and seven-year-old children. They held these boys in their arms, knowing, knowing there was nothing they could do to save them. How long do those scars last? What day do you wake up from that and you're healed? How do you unsee such an abomination? The bond factors this court needs to consider today are set forth in Criminal Rule 46, nature and circumstance of the crime charged, and specifically whether the defendant used or had access to a weapon, including the seriousness of the offense. It's the most serious offense that we have on the books, Judge. This is, this is it. You can't commit a more serious offense. So the nature of the crime charge is the worst crime that can be charged. Did he have access to a weapon? Yes. Obviously he did. The weight of the evidence against the defendant at this point, Judge, we stand here with a full admission of the defendant. That also goes to the confirmation of the defendant's identity and witnesses on scene did see at least part of what happened here. Next, the court is to consider the likelihood this person would return the court if a bond were issued. Again, this is the most heinous crime with the most severe penalty under the law that we presented to the grand jury. That alone would be a, a major factor in discouraging a person from availing himself to this court or any other. And the thought to flee and the likelihood of flight is great in the state's opinion. The danger he poses to the community is a factor that this court can consider, and I think with the facts in front of you, Judge, we can't name a person that poses a greater threat to the community. As his prior record goes, Judge, it is fairly minimal. He was charged with domestic violence in 2010. <clears throat> he is not, to my knowledge, on probation community control. 
Judge, the facts in this case are hopefully like no other we will ever see. When this case gets indicted in the Court of Common Pleas, I am certain that a no bond hearing will be held, and I would hope that would be granted. But at this point, at this juncture, we're going to ask this court to issue a bond we've never asked for before. I'm going to ask for a bond of $20 million. And I hope I never need to request such a bond again. Thank you. Uh, date for preliminary hearing? The date for the preliminary hearing, Judge, is 626. No objection, Your Honor. The preliminary hearing will be set for June 26th at 1 p.m. At this point in time, bond's going to be set in the amount of $20 million cash or surety. Anything else at this time, Mr. Gast? No, Judge. Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen, anything further? Nothing at this time. All right. Thank you. Chad showed absolutely zero emotion in the front yard after brutally murdering the three children that he should have been protecting. But then decided to put on a show for the judge, which I am just disgusted by him. I'm not sure if you guys heard him talking at the end here, but it sounded like he was saying CCO2. I'm not exactly sure what that was in reference to, but there has been speculation that he was asking for the non-population community at the Clermont County Jail, essentially protective custody. And I'm sure they will keep him in protective custody for now, although I really don't think that he should get that after what he did. After court, Prosecutor Mark Tekulv spoke, essentially describing the case as the worst that he had ever seen. This is by far uh, the most sickening, horrifying crime I have seen. I can only imagine that the, the, the terror of these little boys uh, felt and experienced as, as, as their, their father, the protector, was, was murdering them. Uh, the, uh, unfortunately, the mother saw this. Uh, you can imagine that the immense trauma and terror that she experienced. And we will do our utmost uh, within my office to see that uh, this defendant never sees the light of day again. Mark has worked in Clermont County for 34 years now, so saying that it's the worst he's ever seen is a really big, bold statement. He started as an assistant prosecutor in 1989. I can only imagine how much a prosecutor sees in those 34 years. So again, for this to be the worst that he's seen is just absolutely heart-wrenching. Since the court date, more details have come out regarding Chad. I searched Chad's Facebook and saw that on Monday the 12th, he had changed his profile and his cover photo. From the looks of Facebook, one would think that he is a doting dad. And it really gives me the creeps to think of what transpired just days after that. I also looked at Chad's past criminal history. Chad has a lot of motor vehicle offenses, but more seriously, he was arrested in 2010 after allegedly choking his father, Keith Dorman. The case was later dropped when Keith did not show up for court as the prosecution's witness. On Saturday, June 17th, Keith did an interview in which he explained that the 2010 charge was a misunderstanding and had been dropped. I'm not sure how true that is. However, I can understand if it wasn't a misunderstanding that he was possibly just trying to paint his kid in a better light. Although, there is really no better light for someone who heinously just took the lives of three innocent children, and in such a brutal execution manner. Keith described Chad as fun, as a loving dad. He said that he could tell Chad just snapped, and that his eyes were now hollow inside. He followed that by saying, that wasn't Chad standing at the arraignment. That was not him. Keith also said that he hasn't been allowed to speak to Chad despite his wishes to, and when he asked about a motive, he said, I don't know if it was financial, I don't know if it was mental, I don't know if it was work-related, I don't know, I can't talk to him. 
Keith also called Chad a super father, which let's just talk about the irony with that one, like as if. And he said that he was not the type of person and that would do something like this and that overall he was a good kid. He ended up saying that he couldn't handle it anymore before hanging up the call. I can imagine that Keith and his wife Gloria are completely shocked at what has come of Chad and what his actions have been, and I can only imagine their heartbreak and grief in this situation. However, I would still never refer to Chad as a super father. Super fathers don't hurt their kids in any sort of way, let alone kill them in such a cold, brutal, calculated way. Also, if he was planning this for months per his own admission, I don't believe that he just snapped out of nowhere. I should also mention that in court, when requesting a $75,000 bond, Chad's attorney said that Keith and Gloria were willing to co-sign his bond. I understand loving your children unconditionally, but in my opinion, that means holding them accountable and making them deal with the consequences of their actions, especially when they're a full-grown adult in their 30s. It just seems like they are potentially enablers. A motive still has not been officially shared for what transpired at the Dorman home. There is some speculation that there may have been some issues between Laura and Chad and a possible divorce brewing, but I want to be very clear that nothing has been officially confirmed. However, in my opinion, to do something so heinous to children in front of their mother seems extremely vindictive to me. If they were in fact experiencing relationship issues, I could see it being entirely possible that he did do it to get back at her, or to just make her suffer in this grotesque sort of way. But he didn't just physically hurt her, traumatize her, or make her suffer for life. He also traumatized an innocent teenage girl who had to witness such horror happen to her siblings. My heart breaks for both Laura and Alexis, and I truly hope that they are able to get some sort of help as they navigate through this horrible tragedy. Since the incident occurred, the whole community is still reeling. Day in Claremont County that started around 415 when a woman called 911 saying her babies had been shot. Around the same time, Misty Hockey was driving to Kroger and saw a teen girl running for help. She was running with a little black lab and she was screaming, call 911, call 911. She says, my uh, stepfather is shooting everyone in my household. Hockey called 911 as police rushed to the scene on Laurel Lindell Road. I wanted to get her in the car, but she just refused to leave her family. And, and that just says testament of how much she loved them. Despite everyone saying it's a quiet neighborhood and everyone is very nice, one neighbor said the opposite about Chad. That 32-year-old Chad Dorman is charged with aggravated murder. He's being held without bond at the Claremont County Jail and will be arraigned in just a couple hours here in Claremont County at the municipal court. Then sheriff's office says more charges could be added. Now, the boys uh, were found shot at a home near the corner of Laurel Lindale Road and Claremontville Laurel Road. We learned that an unknown woman called 911 screaming that her babies have been shot. And just three minutes later, a separate caller who had driven by called 911 and said that they had seen an underage girl running down the road saying quote her father was killing everyone now when the sheriff's deputies came to the house that's when they found Dorman sitting outside on a step they also found the three boys unresponsive in the yard with gunshot wounds now we know that they did try life-saving measures until Monroe fire and EMS arrived but the boys did die at the scene now the boys mother a 34 year old woman was also outside of the home when officials arrived uh, we learned that she also had a gunshot wound to the hand and was transported to UC medical Center. Now, you guys have been hearing from a neighbor who was home at the time of the incident, and he spoke with us, and he told us uh, really what type of person Chad Dorman is and what he heard and saw from the scene. I, we heard gunshots, and I didn't know what it was. So I went to the store and come back, and then I, you know, found out really what happened. And... Unfortunately, I did see the kids laying in the yard. Um, the guy was very unstable. Just, uh, he was an unstable, unstable person. He was just very mean. He was very angry. Every day, yelling at his wife. 
dogging her, downgrading her, downgrading the kids. Just very angry. And if they didn't do what he said, and I've seen it firsthand. But I never thought that he would do that. The heartbreak, the community is standing strong for Laura and her precious children. Outside her home, there is a memorial set up. Tons of things have been left in remembrance of three sweet little boys who lost their lives far too soon. At a nearby baseball field, a memorial was set up on the field and players had a moment of silence and prayer for the family. The new Richmond Youth Sports Association is collecting donations for the family. Laura's sister, Rachel, also set up a GoFundMe. At the time of this recording, the GoFundMe has raised over $160,000. One of Alexis's friends has also set up a GoFundMe for her friend's family. On Saturday night, Rachel posted a tribute to the boys. In this tribute, it reads, We want the world to know how amazing these babies were. They are not only this tragedy. They were happy and funny, so very funny, goofy, kind, loving boys. They're beautiful and deserve to be proudly displayed. They fished and played ball. They loved fiercely and with their entire hearts. They played together just as hard. Nothing will ever be right without them, but they need to be seen for the blessings they were, the happy lives they lived, the mom who loves them more than herself. They are perfect babies. The house, which was once a home of four beautiful, funny, giggling, loving children, as now a stark reminder of how horrible people can be. Throughout all of this, the one photo that got me the most was this photo of a little bike in the front yard, right nearby where those boys took their final breaths. The bike laying there is just so significant of what should be three happy little children playing outside, and now what will never be three happy little children playing outside. Ohio is a death penalty state. I do hope that they seek the death penalty for Chad. However, the only current way that they execute inmates is by lethal injection. Hopefully he gets sentenced to death and by the time his day rolls around, they're able to use a firing squad the way he did on his children. I truly think that he should suffer and have his last moments be full of pain and fear, just like his sweet, innocent boy's last moments were. And that's something I've thought about lately, and I would love to get your opinions. I know it's conflicted, but I am not vigilante justice, eye for an eye, but I think that that should be the automatic sentencing of these criminals and murderers. You get whatever you did. You abuse someone, you rape someone, that happens to you. You kill someone, you murder someone with a knife, that's what happens to you. Because if that fear is instilled in your mind that that may be your repercussion and may be what happens to you, maybe it'll be a deterrent. Maybe you won't do that. I don't know. Maybe that's just wishful thinking on my end. But I feel like that would probably bring the crime rate down quite a bit. Regardless, I'm going to keep you guys all posted as we learn more in this absolutely gut-wrenching case. For now, please keep this family in your thoughts. Like I said, there is still a lot of information coming out every single day, and I will definitely come back with you and give you a part two with all of the updates. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you take a quick second here, push that subscribe button so that you don't miss that update. Okay, guys, please continue to keep this family in your thoughts and prayers, and let's pray for swift, rapid justice. Thanks so much for tuning in, and until the next case, stay safe. Bye.